guys. Today we're gonna do kind of a review lesson. Um, some of our older friends have seen this a zillion times, but it's still a fun activity. So we like to bring it back again and again. But it's making a bar graph via an interview. So, first of all, let's bring it back to what is a bar graph. A bar graph is when we collect data and then we compare it on a nice little graph with bars. Okay? It could also be a horizontal bar graph, but today we're all gonna make a vertical bar graph. So the first step is you need to think of a question, an interview question. So my interview question is, what is your favorite mammal? Okay. So number one, I thought of my interview question. I'm gonna ask people what their favorite mammal is. I have mammals on the brain. And then number two is to prepare for your interview. Okay, you don't wanna just like go into an interview blindly and just be like, I'm on the phone now and I don't know what's going on. I forgot my question. Right, that never feels good. And people might take not take your poll seriously. Right? We want them to take it seriously because this is your work. So here's what I did. Okay, I kind of brainstormed a little bit in my notebook first before I went into asking people, and then I had my question written down so that if I blanked or if they're asking me about life and quarantine and all of this, uh, I didn't forget my focus in the end. Okay, so I wrote down. Hi, I'm taking a poll for a bar graph assignment. Out of these options, what is your favorite animal? Or, sorry, mammal. And I thought it was important to also say out of these options, um, and I encourage you to do the same because it's gonna be easiest while we're first making these if you only have about five options. Okay, the worksheet online, the graph, blank graph, only has five options, and then this one I made by hand only has five options. It's just kind of a good number. So I'll just pick five of whatever your topic's going to be. So, like I said, um, I'm asking them, out of these options, what is your favorite mammal? And then I wrote down the options. Lion, lemur, platypus, tiger, mouse. And then as I called people, or some people I end up having this text. It's okay. I, I really love the conversations that people actually call. Um, excuse about you. And then I just did tally marks for their vote. Okay, and I even brainstormed a big list at the end, the bottom. I came up with 20 people, but my Aunt Pat didn't end up responding in time, which is okay, so I just kind of scribbled her out. But love you, Aunt Pat. But making a list kind of helped me know who am I gonna reach out to and I didn't have any duplicates. Kind of like we did in the classroom when we used the roster to make sure we hit everybody in the class and ask them your question and didn't have duplicates. So same kind of idea. So the next step is to actually conduct your interview and collect the data, right? So you're taking the tally marks, you're making sure you got everybody in the list. And then you're gonna make your bar graph. I don't have a printer at home, so I literally just took some time, took a ruler, pencil, marker, and color pencils, and made my own. Also be helpful to use graph paper. You get a big graph paper. Big graph paper probably would work better. Also, small graph paper is helpful just to keep things in line. But you don't need it. And if you have a printer and you want to do that, you can just print the one offline. My only like suggestion, well, not suggestion, requirement 
is that you need to, if you print the one offline, it doesn't come with these side titles. And it's really important that they're on there. So let's take a deeper look at the bar graph so that you know what's on here and what we expect. So at the very top, everybody needs a title, right? It should apply to your graph. It should make sense. If you're going to do, what is your favorite color? It could be favorite colors. If you're going to do um, favorite type of vacation, maybe it's like a beach vacation, a hiking vacation, favorite types of vacations, okay? Your title should apply to whatever the graph is going to be about. Kind of like the cover or the title of a book. And then over here and down here, we're also going to have these side titles. So these numbers represent the number of votes. Yeah. It's like people aren't just wondering what those numbers are. This tells you this corresponds to the number of votes. And then down here where we have lion, lemur, platypus, tiger, mouse, those are the types of mammals, or you could put mammal choices. Either applies, but we should always label our graph so that we know what you're talking about, what's going on in this graph. Especially sometimes you might come across a really big bar graph with tons of data going on, and adults use these all the time too. Impossible to know what's going on accurately if there aren't labels. Okay, so always make sure to label your graph. And then the final fifth step of the bar graph is interpret the data. So kind of like when you finish a book and you aren't just like, forgot about that book. Who knows what happened? Not gonna reflect on that at all. What, hmm? what's going on? Okay. We don't do that. We stop and internalize it. Or when you leave a movie, you usually, you get in the car and you kind of talk about it a little bit, right? Like, what was your favorite part? Oh my gosh, what did you think when the bird flew in and snatched the egg and flew away? Like, ah, that was crazy, right? The same thing applies when you finish your graph. Okay, stop and interpret the data. This says a lot. Which mammal received the most votes? The lion. Which mammal received the least amount of votes? The mouse. Why don't people seem to like mice as much? Why do people like lions over mice? Hmm. Interesting. And then our next one will be lemur. I was kind of surprised about that one. I wonder if people know what a lemur is because they seem pretty cool to me. Maybe that's just my opinion. But it makes me wonder, I wonder if people are informed of what a lemur is, or if they're not really sure so they didn't vote for it, or they don't see it much, right? So when you finish your graph, stop and think about it. Ask some questions, discuss it with a friend, discuss it with your parents, okay? Share it with the people you interviewed. They're probably gonna be curious about the poll when they're done. and. The word poll, in case you haven't heard it before, just means when you take kind of a survey, you ask a bunch of people questions, and then they all respond, and you collect the data, put it together somehow, and this bar graph shows your poll. All right, so one last time, here are the steps. Number one, think of your interview question. Two, prepare for your interview. Remember how I wrote it out? Show you that one more time. Okay. Conduct your interview and collect data. Make your bar graph and interpret the data. Okay. All right, and then a final note, your graph doesn't have to look absolutely perfect. Please do it yourself. Please don't have a parent do it for you. This is your assignment and we know you're capable. If a line, if you mess up, it's a little wonky, that's okay. I made a little mistake here. Okay, no big deal. Make it yours. All right, have fun.